So far this year, we've seen Greece and the Eurozone battle to resolve their debt woes, a Chinese market boom and bust, a rally in oil, a slump in commodity prices, rampant takeover activity, huge share buyback programmes, 12 FTSE 100 firms changed their boss, and the UK election result. And that's just for starters. Now, unfortunately, none of this has really got us anywhere very fast. As the chart behind us shows, the FTSE 100 is not much better than flat in capital terms for the year, even if dividend payments have topped up total returns, and any dealing costs and taxes incurred could have chewed up some of those gains anyway. 2015, therefore, has been a great example of legendary US investor Warren Buffett's old saying, and I quote, investors should remember that excitement and expenses are their enemies. Hello, I'm Ross Moll, the AJ Belt Investment Director, and I'm here this week to look at the FTSE 100 in a little bit more depth to help you understand what really makes the UK's leading index tick. Now, as we've just seen and heard, there's been lots going on so far this year, but it's not that anybody's portfolio is a vast amount of good, at least if we've been looking to the FTSE 100. But digging a bit deeper, we can see that the UK's leading index has yielded plenty of winners if we'd managed to spot them. Check this out. This first chart here shows the best five performing stocks in the FTSE 100 year to date. They are, in order, Taylor Wimpy, Barrett Developments, Mondi, Persimmon and BG Group. Well done if your crystal ball told you that. Three house builders, a paper firm and a takeover candidate with gains of 28% to 47% between them. Not bad for an index that's again broadly flat. Now, the worst performing stocks, again some equally dramatic moves. Here they are behind me. Rio Tinto, Glencore, Royal Dutch Shell, Fresnillo and Anglo-American. They're all down by between 15 and 26% between them, and you don't need to be Sherlock Holmes to spot the commodities link that ties all of those names together. But what really interests me here is the gap between the best and the worst, from up 47 to down 26 in a market that again is broadly flat. So, one thing to consider here is a lesson from another legendary US investor, the late Sir John Templeton. Like Buffett, he finished up a billionaire so his record does mean it's worth listening to him. He said the stock market is just that, a market for stocks. So that you are then therefore in a position to do well by focusing on individual names and forgetting about the macro altogether. Nobody knows how Greece is going to play out, least of all the poor Greeks themselves, so we've no edge and very little chance of adding value there. But analyse the company's balance sheet, its cash flow, its competitive position, its management and its valuation, we'll be doing more work than most, and we can get an edge there the same work on an industry can also help cut down the field in the amount of research required. The sector trends of 2015 make that clear, and I can also show you returns over, say, five years rather than six months to back up this point. So over the last five years, the top performers are, and here they are, Ashted, Taylor Wimpy, Sports Direct, Barrett and Persimmon. Gains between them from 400 all the way up to nearly 1,000%. Now the next chart, in contrast, shows the five-year losers. Fresnillo, Morrison, Standard Chartered, Tesco, and Anglo-American drops of 39 to 65%. Over the same period, the FTSE 100 is up 28, so that's a massive gap again between best and worst. So let's just think back five years. The UK economy was a mess, and everyone was barking about a commodity super cycle. Lo and behold, now domestic players are doing well, Sports Direct has taken market share, so effectively from its rivals, the state of the high street almost doesn't matter, and the builders have repaired battered balance sheets. In sum, those five between them have shown better growth than expected, reduced risk very effectively, or shown more predictable earnings than expected, all from a time when they were ignored and potentially lowly valued. By contrast, nobody really expected food retailing to blow up, at least until the new low-priced rivals arrived. Standard Chartered has shown it's not a perfectly run bank, and commodity stocks are in the doghouse after a multi-year raw material price slide. Again, the consensus view was largely wrong, valuations left little margin for error, as growth disappointed, there proved to be more risks than expected and quality proved poor, owing to accounting scandals, ineffective management, or weaker than expected balance sheets. So, 
you can add value to your portfolio as picking stocks, even in tricky markets. That's not to say it's easy, it does take time, does need practice, and you must do your own research, so it's not for everyone. And if it isn't for you, it's no shame or crime to admit it and look to an index tracker or a fund instead where the fund manager can pick the stocks for you. But by focusing on unloved names that could be cheap and dodging the stuff everybody's talking about, you might be off to a good start for the long term, especially if the individual companies in question have sound businesses, good balance sheets and a capable management team. So thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.